If you're starting a homestead to save money, you may be disappointed with the outcome. But in today's video, I'm going to share how we pay for our homestead and some great ways to make your homestead more affordable. Look at this crazy lady. What are you doing, Rosie? You're sitting in it. Land is expensive. You can't make it. It doesn't grow on trees and it's definitely getting harder to find. With billionaires and major corporations buying up a lot of the real estate, it makes it harder for those who want a homestead to find land without breaking the bank. And COVID definitely didn't make that any easier. Ashlyn and I found our property last year and we were lucky enough to take advantage of a pretty unique housing market, uh, a seller's market. And so we sold our property in Washington state, which was an expensive and still is a very expensive state to live and decided to buy property in Kentucky, which was a much cheaper state. And that brings me to my next point, buy in a low market. Now that can mean buy real estate when the market has gone down or like we did, buy in a cheaper state than where you currently live. Make sure you're smart with your purchase. You wanna check flood maps, easements, restrictions, you know, make sure you check on your neighbors. Make sure you, you, you wanna live next to this person. Who knows, you may have a, a pig processing plant right next to you or a dump or something that's smelly, you may not enjoy that. So make sure you check those before you buy your property. Ashlyn and I looked for property for quite a long time before we stumbled upon this one. We had been searching and searching while still in our home in Washington. And once we started finding a couple that we were interested in, it was time to sell our home. And we were able to take advantage of an extremely high seller's market in Washington state, turn around and buy something in a much cheaper state like Kentucky and have a lot of money left over. So do your research, check out the markets in your area or the areas you would like to live. And honestly, I think we're about to see a pretty big downturn in the real estate market here soon. So if you've been waiting for a while to buy some, some property, your opportunity may be coming soon. Don't get in over your head. So many people find that perfect, beautiful homestead. They spend a ton of money on it. They get a huge mortgage to pay for it. And then they find out that homesteading isn't cheap. And so to pay for the animals, the feed, the infrastructure, they then have to go back to work full time. And then because they're working full time, they don't have, they don't have time to garden and build stuff and take care of the animals. So don't buy more than you think you need, especially if you've never had a homestead before. Ashton and I decided that if we were truly gonna do this, we were gonna do it debt free. And that meant no car payments, no mortgage payment. And that way we could have the time to do what we truly wanted to do. Now I realize that not everybody has that opportunity. Not everybody has the money to do that. And so make sure you budget, make sure you calculate the numbers and take a lot of time to, to think this decision through because you don't want to get in over your head and have this massive mortgage and, and either have to sell your property or just have to come to grips with the fact that you don't have the time to do all the things you wanted to do. And so this brings me to my next point. Start small. When we started looking for property, I knew I wanted at least 20 acres, but I was hoping for 40 and I was honestly entertaining over 100 acres. Now I can humbly say that would have been a huge mistake because for one, we wouldn't have used all the land. Two, we would have paid taxes on land we weren't using. And three, we would have spent money on something that we could have used otherwise for other things like feed, animals, infrastructure, things like that. We ended up buying 26 usable acres and honestly, we probably could have bought five or 10 and done all the same things. Do everything yourself. I heard a quote once and it went something like this. If you were able-bodied and broke, well, that's nothing but opportunity. And I love those kinds of quotes because it's so true. And if you don't know how to frame a house or install plumbing and electrical or change a roof or, you know, install a toilet, anything, you can learn to do those things. And using YouTube and Google, all the information's out there in the world just waiting for you to learn. Now, if you've watched our channel in the past, you've probably seen that we pretty much do everything by ourselves. And, and anything I don't know how to do, I learn how to do it. And I've been plumbing for nine years. I never knew how to sheetrock. I never knew how to frame. I never knew how to run electrical or install HVAC, but I took the time and I learned how to do it. And I saved so much money along the way, way cheaper than hiring somebody else to do it. Another quote I like is a jack of all trades is a master of none 
but oftentimes better than a master of one. If you're gonna homestead, you're gonna have to be like the farmer who's also the vet and the operator and the plumber. You're gonna have to do all these things to save money in the long run. Ooh, it's snowing. We've been having some crazy weather here in Kentucky. It was negative seven one week and then 70 degrees and now we have snow again. And, and then in a few days, it's supposed to be up to 60 again. Good recipe for tornadoes. Bring in outside income. If you have a spouse or a significant other, I'm gonna assume that one of you is more into homesteading than the other. And so one of you can go get a job, even if it's part-time or full-time, and that can help pay for everything back on the homestead. And who knows, maybe someday you'll work from home. For Ashlyn and I, I was the lunatic that got us into this homesteading thing. And, and she enjoys being out and engaging with the world a lot more than I do. And so it kind of worked out because she would go work her job in town and I would stay here on the property, running the homestead and building the house. So you just kind of have to find what works for you. And, and if one of you is willing to work off the property, then that's perfect because that'll be a great way to bring in some income. Now there are plenty of ways to bring in income on a homestead. And that brings me to my next point generate income from the homestead. There's a ton of great videos out there on YouTube on this topic, but I'm just gonna go ahead and name a few of them. You could sell eggs, you could sell meat, you can make soap and sell that. You could start a raw milk herd share. You could harvest lumber and, and start a sawmill. You could offer equipment services. If you have a tractor, you can offer so much an hour to your neighbors to till their garden or brush hog their fields, whatever it is. That's just a few off the top of my head and there's so many more, but you can YouTube tons of videos on good ways to generate income from the homestead. Find a good community. My grandpa always told me to be nice to your neighbors because you never know when you're gonna need a hand. And when your neighbor asks for help, you help him because when it's your turn, he'll do the same. For Ashlyn and I, we moved all the way across the country from Washington State to Kentucky and we didn't know a single person in Kentucky. A lot of people thought we were crazy for that, but we didn't know anybody and so we're very thankful to have found such wonderful neighbors who have offered us their help countless times and we help them as well when they need it. Just make sure you give as much as you take, that's important. Buy second hand. Use things like Facebook Marketplace, Craigslist, garage sales to find anything you need and I realize sometimes you're gonna have to buy new stuff and we do as well but I'm always on Craigslist, on Facebook Marketplace checking to see if there's anything that we currently need or anything I know we're gonna need in the future. It's a great way to save some money. Last but not least, use your land efficiently. This is gonna save you a lot of money in the long run. You can do things like rotationally graze your animals to make better soil health so that way the grass grows a lot better in the next years. Don't build your house in a floodplain. You know, put the barn and the shop closer to the house. One of the things that I hate about our property is that the shop is extremely far away from the house and so all the tools that I don't use while building the house are stored in the shop. And so I have to walk all the way from the house to the shop when I need something. And a lot of the time I get back to the house and guess what? I didn't grab everything I need. So make sure you put the garage, the shop closer to the house. You can harvest your own seeds for next year's planting. You can plant perennials. You can transplant trees from the forest. I've done that as well. You can hatch your own chickens from eggs. You can breed your livestock for next year's supply. There's so many ways to make money on a homestead and save money on a homestead. If you're looking to live this kind of lifestyle or you already do and you're just looking for better ways to save some money, I hope this video helps you on your journey. And just some words of wisdom, nothing worth having was ever easy. If you're looking at taking this lifestyle change and you're just not sure, I recommend doing it. Make sure you think it out and make sure it's well planned, but, but do it because I did and I do not regret it one bit. So thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you in the next one.